Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the broadcast today. Mary Lau joins us. She's president and CEO of the Retail Association of Nevada. Here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Big R in Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot hardware store and a whole lot more. It's huge with clothing, power equipment, tools, and of course, Hardware. Big R is located on Bering Boulevard in Sparks, next to Smith's and opposite Reed High School. Big R. Hardware and a whole lot more. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker, and you've got a lot of convention space and meeting breakout space for people. Tell us about what's available. Well, we can handle a group up to about 250, uh, and anywhere as small as 10 or 15. So it really depends on what you're looking for, what the customer's looking for. We're open to anything. It's a beautiful drive, and if you live in South Reno, it's probably about 30, 35 minutes, so it's real easy to get to. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always delighted to welcome back to the program Mary Lau, president and CEO of the Retail Association of Nevada, and one of our proud sponsors from pretty much day one, 21 years ago. So thank you yeah. for that, as always. Um, I want to start out going down memory lane a little bit, if I may. What was the first legislative session you went to? Uh, well, as a director of retail or yeah. just as a lobbyist? Uh, either way. Uh, it was 89. 89. 87 or 89, something like that, yeah. Who was leadership I was up, then? working up at the lake and came down and testified on some credit bills. And interestingly enough, bills that were uh, raising the threshold of allowable crimes. Sound familiar? Yes, it certainly does. Um, who was is, who is in leadership at that time? Obviously, Bill Raggio, I'm guessing. <laughs> Obviously, Bill Raggio and, J and Dini. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it would vacillate back and forth between Bill and Jack Fragiles at the time. And, and what was the tenor of, of the sessions there? Because you didn't have term limits, so people have been around a while. Uh, they'd actually been around forever. Um, a lot of them, there was a whole bunch of old names that won't mean anything now to anybody, but, you know, like those of us that love them, the Virgil Ghettos, the Jack Jeffries, John Carpenter. I mean, all of these people were amazing. But again, the point that you're driving at is there was more community. There was ability to work together. There was um <clears throat> things that that both sides of leadership would do if you needed help on something you could meet with them you knew like with jack jeffries he was so fair and so wonderful to work with just don't mess with the unions you know each one had their own little interests and stuff uh joe dini a businessman had been a previous republican and he was so good working with business and he was also vital for the state and we all know, you know, Bill Raggio was called Uncle Bill by most people. And even Virgil's, I mean, Jack Virgil's was a hoot, but you could get together with these people and you could work out your issues. If somebody was really giving you a hard time, <laughs> they'd sit there, throw something in finance and say, let me know when you figure it out. Because we also didn't have 120 day sessions in either. Right, right. Um, another name that I need to throw out there would be Bill Billiou. Oh, my God. Well, Bill Billiou's still around. He's right. a rascal forever. Bob Barengo, 
still around. I mean, you love these people. Bill Yu is still active, but he's active in a very subli- you know, subdued, sarcastic way. <laughs> the man <laughs> is amazing. And I adore, he and his wife, I mean, they're wonderful people. And they have stayed true to the course the whole time. And Randolph Townsend was an up-and-comer. He was an up-and-comer. And Randolph, I still enjoy Senator Townsend. I don't care if he went on the Gaming Commission or anything else. He is senator to me. But uh, I still reach out to him for advice. We're both Aquarians. So happy birthday, Randolph, when his birthday actually hits. But that man worked on... uh, he almost like broke your leg if you interfered with anything towards trying to get more funding for mental health. He worked on mental health, mental health, mental health. And it has to break your heart to see how it was underfunded after that, how so many things got dropped, how so many things got waylaid where they may be still here, but they're not the original purpose. And the man's amazing. So I think he'd be happy to know that this governor is focusing on mental health now, too. Well, I know he would be. I talked to him recently. (laughs) Well, um, you know, and and you're absolutely right. And I said this on the program a couple of weeks ago. When I first got into television news in 1980, one of the first interviews on the set was a gentleman who just resigned from uh, mental health in the state and was saying at that point how woefully underfunded mental health services were in the state of Nevada. And it's such a huge issue, and it affects almost every area of the state, especially schools, I would say, at this point in time. Oh, absolutely. And it, 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 took, it took Randolph a while to get positioned. And when he did, Katie barred the door, um, he actually helped Maggie Carlton become a very strong leader and become very knowledgeable on boards and commissions and stuff like this because he gave his uh, members on his committee, commerce committee, uh, subcommittees, if you will, and um, just absolutely made them responsible, work them to death, but you know, that was fine. That's what we did then. And it was great, and he's somebody that switched too. He was a Democrat and became a Republican. So he was a Democrat when he was a car racer. So <laughs> then he got <laughs> serious. <laughs> I know. Well, Andy Barbano was his first campaign manager uh, because uh, in in that race he ran against my my wife's former husband. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> who was a very strong Republican at that point in time. All right, let's take a break. Let's come back. And now we'll that talk. we've got everybody under the age of 60 that has no idea what we're talking about, what's the show going to be today? Listen, the, you know, the deal is we have this thing called Google. They can Google these names and they'll come up with a fascinating history. Oh, one other last thing real quick. Um, was Jack Spar officially a part of a legislative building or was it still a place you went to? Oh, no, it was officially, it was a legislative building. It was a a sports gym, if you wanted to get into boxing match. And uh, (laughs) at the time, you, the, in the assembly, the windows opened. So there was a, 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 many rare occasions (laughs) that somebody just walk out the window and go across the street and have a shot. And you used, you used to send mini bottles on the floor. Well, I mean, it was fun then. It was productive. You know, you'd have, oh my God, at the time, Bob Price uh, playing guitar during Shiny Die because it took two weeks to get out of there. And I don't know how long this, that's drama there. But they'd, you'd have popcorn, they'd be throwing at it and they'd be having a guitar and they'd be singing, we'd be singing. You know, it was it was uh, a lot more fun, and I will say a lot more productive. Well, I mean, the, we got stuff done in deference to your audience. We got stuff done. Well, Jack's Bar is now called the Bank Saloon and owned by the Builders Alliance, and that's where we'll be broadcasting from starting in March. So uh, I know it stopped nipping, Sam. We know what <laughs> just goes on. <laughs> You're bringing back. You're bringing back the old club. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about today's legislature after this timeout.
I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your furnace breaks down today, we fix it today. Why freeze for days while your furnace is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get warm again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 and we'll fix it today. That's 323-5585 or online at nevadaheating.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Mary Lau. She's the president and CEO of the Retail Association of Nevada. So I went to both legislative balls, the one in Reno and the one in Las Vegas. And the thing that struck me was, it just seemed like everybody was ready for a whole new beginning. Uh, not just of administration, but just a whole new beginning. And there was an excitement in the air. Are you, are you getting that sense yourself? It absolutely is. Um, I think people are looking for it. It's kind of like coming out of the darkness. And it, it still has a lot to do with the survival from COVID, the businesses that survived. I mean. We still have businesses that are failing because of COVID, because post-COVID, hiring is a mess. So you can't quite, especially for mom and pops, they can't quite get what they need at the prices they can afford and stuff. So that's created some problems. And then the, the lack of communication from the previous administration is was disconcerting. And I think everybody is like, okay, time for a new beginning, time for a fresh air, fresh air and time to move forward. And um, it was, there was an openness and a, and a kiss and makeup. I mean, the balls are also an opportunity for people that weren't there in the beginning to show their love at that point in time. So <laughs> as we will term it, but it, um, I think there's an enthusiasm out there. There's some consternation where it's like, okay, is this session, what is the session going to be like? Is it going to be deja vu all over again? Or is it really going to be able to work with, you know, with both parties across the aisle? Or if you can term it four parties if you want to, because you've got progressives and moderate Dems, you've got moderate R's, and you have got far right. So, and then in the, there's nobody in the middle quite yet. Um, we don't have a Bernie Sanders or a Christian cinema as far as being registered as something else, but caucusing with a particular dominant party. So I don't know, it, it, everybody is cautiously optimistic. It's gonna be a little bit different. The building is different now. There's no place to really meet. There's no place where people can gather and be together they decided to put a library in their research library and stuff so they took out areas where uh, legislators and lobbyists met even sometimes or staff would come down and have meals so there's going to be an adjustment 
There's not as much room on the second floor yet. When it's finished, I understand there'll be more. But it's interesting because a lot of our major members, of course, are in all 50 states. And Nevada was known as having one of the best legislative buildings in the United States. And I don't know how it's going to pass, Mr. Now, as far as being able to work together. Uh, what there's, do you think? there's optimism, Sam. And I like that. What, what do you think the LCB was thinking when they redesigned the building? Because the cafeteria area was where more work got done. And I think more lobbying and, and legislation was arranged uh, in that area rather than the food being consumed. I have no idea. I think it's a compliment to say thinking. Um, it, it wasn't well thought out unless, it, and of course, in the world of conspiracy theories and everything else, now it's like, well, they just don't want us to be able to meet. They really don't want us in the building. It's like, oh my God, let's not start all this right now. Let's see how it works out. But I, you know, <clears throat> I haven't found one person that said what a great idea, and I'm so glad they did that. Well, food trucks in the middle of winter is definitely not my idea of a great idea. But that, Well, that's food a... trucks are by appointment only almost because you've got a, a QR code. You can send in your menu. They tried to make it easy for that, but stand in line. And if you sit there and you go, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm going to miss the food truck. And all of a sudden you've got a pressing report that has to get to your legislator. What are you going to do? You're going to fit. You're going to skip your meal. So well, we'll see how it goes. It's yep. too late. They can't tear down the walls. Well, you can tear down this wall, Mr. Gorgia. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Governor Lombardo uh, made a point in several speeches that I've heard um, to various groups that uh, he intends to work across party lines to get things done. How difficult do you think that's going to be with the majorities in both houses? That depends on the majority in both houses. In reality, because if you are willing to be a team player for the highest and best good of the state of Nevada, you will work with the governor. If you're trying to load shit up so that, oops, there, stuff up, <laughs> apologies to your audience. If you're trying to load up a Christmas tree just for political purposes, you're no longer working for the highest and best good for the state. You're working for majorities and primaries and politics. So uh, if the shoe right now, it rests with majority leader Canizaro and speaker Yeager. It's like, are you going to actually work with this governor, and I don't mean acquiesce to him because, you know, you have the right to express your opinion. You have the right to say no, but you don't have to lay minefields. You don't have to lay traps and you don't have to try to, to you know, narrow somebody's ability to function just so that, you know, you can get your super majority next time or you can protect seats you want to protect or you can set the stage for a different governor. That's the way the game is played, and it has basically crippled this state and maybe the United States, too. It's come too much into re-election as opposed to highest and best good policy. Um, you worked with uh, now Speaker Yeager um, on various bills uh, during the last session. Um, and the criminal justice reform bill that caused a lot of heartburn for your industry. Um, is he willing to open things up and at least discuss some of the limits that uh, uh, were raised? That, you know, I, I think judging from what's happening in California and here in Nevada, um, it looks that, like they should be lowered. I think that he is willing to look at that and to see. The... Um, <clears throat> You can't really say it was a test case, but we can kind of define it as such when they pass some of those reforms. Some of it has proven very, very harmful. You let somebody out of jail, your no bail or your reduced bail policy, and it's just vacation time. Let's, you know, get the heck out of Dodge. We saw what happened with the guy that was here and then went back up to Oregon and eventually shot himself underneath the house. There, there's things like that. And then your organized retail crime, everybody knows how bad that is. They are not mostly peaceful protests, okay? 
and it's costing billions of dollars. Uh, the sergeant down, down south or detective, my apologies, um, he only has four people on that crew. And they have to do it all. And then sometimes you can't even get uh, the DA's office to take the cases. So something has to be done to protect the public and also to, to stop this, this mayhem down there that's just getting worse. It's, it's up here. It's bad up here, too, in northern Nevada, I will say. But it's just it's something that has to be addressed. And the speaker is not unaware of some of the problems. And he understands some of it. So he's going to have to try to balance what they needed, what they wanted, versus what really works. And, and that's hopefully what you do with the law. Sometimes, you know, the, the second part of a bill is called unintended consequences. And then you go back and fix it. So I think he's amenable to some work. He's not amenable to undoing all of it. And it was his baby, you, you know. The bathwater can go out, but the baby can't. So let's see what happens. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with Mary Lau after this timeout. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real. It's growing. And it needs your help. Go online to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Mary Lau. She's the president and CEO of the Retail Association of Nevada. So uh, we've had several discussions over the last couple of days on this program about the potential for a bill uh, going to the legislature to take money from Story County uh, that will be coming in after the abatement cease for Tesla um, that Sparks and Reno and Washoe County would like to get their hands on some of that money. Story County is fighting back saying, hey, not only do we have infrastructure that we need to rebuild ourselves and build, uh, but also there's money to be repaid to Roger Norman that is in six figures in terms of hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, what do you think about this? I think they're too late to the party. It's totally asinine if they would have sat down possibly and said, what can be done, but they've got the benefit of, you know, it's a benefit and a curse, growth. You know, housing and stuff like this, Reno and Warshaw County and Sparks and stuff have done well, but Story County has done, they haven't made any money off of this stuff. They developed a program, they got your land permits done immediately, and they worked their little focuses off to turn around and make sure that, that TRI, or TRIC at the time, um, absolutely uh, succeeded. And they worked with Roger Norman on that. 
now that they're reaching that end of the abatement, all of a sudden somebody goes, well, I want it too. It's like, have you ever been up in Story County, people? You still have dirt roads to everything. You st they have not done any infrastructure. They have not straightened it out. And I keep going to the NACO, the state of the counties meetings and stuff. And they've always said in that, we will move it down the pipeline as we can. And we've also invested in other areas. I mean, Story County is going to help out or had talked about helping out Lyon County. Lyon County is necessary pipeline to get things into Story County. Plus, it's their, their workers can live in Lyon County and in, in Silver Spring, Stagecoach, Fallon, that kind of stuff. And there's more going out in that direction, um, more building. You've got Partols and you've got Roger Norman looking at that. And all of a sudden, these late people to the dance say, I want some too. Well, they didn't. They didn't cooperate with it. They didn't work towards it or anything else in the beginning. So why? Because you're successful. You know, that's just like watching your business partner leave you and become successful. And it's like, now you owe me. No, you don't. Work that, with them. Don't work on them. And that's where we have to leave it. Mary Lau, I have 100 more questions, but no more time. Uh, please come back. We'll see you in Carson City. Okay, sir. Welcome to the bank. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll Alrighty. be right back. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Snorkel personnel lifts are engineered beyond the industry norm to an uncommon level of safety and durability and with an eye towards sustainability. They're also designed to be simple to operate and maintain. Snorkel, always at the cutting edge of progress. With Nevada's only transplant center and verified burn center, the science is here. With award-winning cardiologist and the state's only dedicated heart failure clinic, the talent is here. With Nevada's most advanced robotic surgery, the technology is here. And with the Silver State's only designated pediatric trauma center, hope is here. All because we are here. UMC. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the Valley from Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more. Get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.